What is up guys, Charlie Peng is here. Welcome to episode three of T-Shirt Design. So stoked to bring you guys another T-Shirt Design tutorial. Hope you guys are enjoying them. If you are, let me know in the comments section below. I always like hearing your guys' feedback. Um, before we get into today's video, I do wanna give a huge shout out to our sponsor over at Into The AM. Into The AM is a clothing brand that's basically a bunch of creators and artists coming together to make the brand possible. And they do some awesome stuff, guys. I actually have one of their shirts on right now. Of course, they sent me an owl shirt because they know I love owls, obviously. So uh, this one's really, really cool. Nice and vibrant print, feels really nice on. And the fabric of the shirt feels really good on as well. It's very comfortable. And they do have a cool tag print right here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it looks really cool. So you could definitely tell they put a lot of hard work into making this brand possible. They did actually send me some other designs, so I'll open them real quick and show you guys what those look like. One of them is glow in the dark, which is insane. Let's look at it. It is glow in the dark. Look at that. <laughs> things badass. I just love the simplicity of it, the colors of it, it's really cool. Rest assured, when you purchase through Into the AM, you're gonna get a quality print, you're gonna get a quality garment, and it's going to have a premium experience too because you get the, the tag right here that's on the bottom left of the shirt and you get a free sticker with your purchase. If you guys like what you see today with Into the AM, you can check them out in the description below. They're giving you guys 10% off and that also includes sale items. So if something is on sale, you could still get 10% off using the link in the description below and check out some of their other designs guys because they have some really, really cool stuff on their website. Today we're creating a t-shirt design in Photoshop and we're gonna use some resources as well. So it's gonna be a fully packed tutorial full of a lot of knowledge. So uh, sit down, relax, and enjoy the tutorial. Let's get it going. Today I'm using a brand new MacBook Pro to record this video. So hopefully the internal mic sounds really good. It's supposed to have one of the best internal mics on any MacBook Pro. So let me know in the comment section below if it's up to our standards on this channel. Uh, but anyway, we're going to get right into this tutorial. I have these really cool zombie skull biker type designs that I found on this website. And if you guys wanna download these, I will link them on my website so you guys can go to the description below and download these if you would like to. I did pay for these, just so you know. So I do have rights to use these, uh, but if you guys want to use them, you do have to pay for them as well if you plan on printing them or anything like that. So anyway, with that out of the way, um, I decided I'm gonna use the top left one for our design today. We're gonna to add some cool text around it and really come up with some sort of design with this skull. Before I get into the design portion of this, I do need to start a new document. Document. So I'm going to go up to File, New, or I can do Command New as well. It's important to note that if you're using a site like Merch by Amazon or anything like that, it's good to figure out exactly what size they recommend. But for this uh, tutorial, I'm just going to use the one that I always use, which is 14 inches by 18 inches. That's just my go-to at 300 resolution. Now, I'm not actually printing this design, so I'm not going to design it in 300 resolution for the sake of my CPU. Um, I just want to um, be able to design without any lag. So again, I only really need 300 resolution if I'm actually printing this. The only other thing that you'd really wanna change is background contents. And this can be the color of your shirt that you plan on printing on. I think I'm gonna go with like, let, let's say a gray shirt. So I'm gonna go to a gray color, hit okay, and then hit that big create button. Now our document is set up correctly. And we even have the color of our shirt here, which is awesome. So now what I wanna do is go grab my vector resource, which is right here. I'm gonna grab this top left one because I think it looks pretty cool. I'm just gonna do Command C, Command V to paste that. It's gonna be quite large, so I can just resize it real quick. So I'm just gonna resize it to about right there. Hit enter, and then I'm gonna take my magic wand and just delete the white out, but I don't want it to affect everything. The cool thing about Photoshop now is you can actually select things fairly easy. So I'm on the magic wand tool. If I hit select subject, it's going to select that subject out automatically for me, which is really cool. Um, you can also do it manually, but this is a really easy way to cut something out. Now all I have to do is press Command X on my keyboard, and as you can see, it cuts it out perfectly. I can delete everything else and just paste that back in place. And we're gonna add some really cool rockers to this. So I'm just gonna drag out a rectangle. So I have a rectangle now, and what I wanna do is Command T, and we're just gonna really do some traditional rocker design here. And I wanna change the warp to arc. And now we have something that looks like this, and we can always change the arc at any time. So I think I'm gonna change it to about right there. I don't want it to be too arced, obviously. So this looks really good. We can keep that the same. And then from here, I can duplicate it and flip it. So I'm flipping it vertically, and we have something that looks like this. I can group those together. So now we have the rockers in their own group, and then we have the skull below that. So we're doing really good now. I just have to decide if I want these to be a stroke or a solid fill. I'm actually gonna duplicate them once so we have a second copy. Change the fill to zero, 
and then add an inner stroke. And just see what this is gonna look like. It might look cool, it might not. That looks pretty good. We can even resize them a little bit, just like that. And now I can move them down, so I'm gonna go into the actual group and just reposition them a little bit more, just like that. So I do think bigger looks better on this uh, design. For some reason, I felt like they were too small. So let's look at the before. So this is them before and this is them after. I do like the stroke a lot better, so I'm gonna stick with that for now. Another thing that I wanna think about is the font. I think I'm gonna go with like a Brothers OT type font, which is part of the Adobe type kit. It's just a really safe font in this kind of case because it has that biker feel. So we're gonna, we're gonna try that out and see if it works. I'm actually going to create an ellipse real quick so it matches the same arc as my, my banners, right? So I'm gonna do the top one first. Think about right there, it looks pretty good. We're gonna make sure that is centered. And then I wanna to go to my T tool, just hit T on my keyboard, and then I can start typing. So we're gonna type out um, ride into, and then what I wanna do is go to my path selection tool and just rotate this path. So I'm taking these anchor points and rotating it so this text is in the center of our artboard here or our document, whatever you wanna say. And then um, from here, we can just click on the T here and just resize it. So we're gonna stick with that. And then we also do wanna add text on the bottom, right? So I'm gonna take the same ellipse and we're gonna drag it down and I can even change the opacity or the fill so I know exactly where it's sitting. I think that looks pretty good. Make sure it is centered again. It is, so we're good. And then we could go to our T tool again and add another type path. So just hit T on your keyboard and uh, hover above the line and just type in something else. So right into the night, let's say. And then if we need to, we can even change the spacing so there's a little bit more breathing room. What I'm doing is going in between the and night and I'm just holding an option and hitting my left arrow key and it's uh, changing the letter spacing. And I could do this in between each character. So like the and night could be spaced out a little bit more. So I'm just making micro adjustments in between each character. That looks really cool already. I'm really digging the look of that. Um, another thing that I would like to do is kind of experiment with some color because we have some really cool color going on with the skull on the center. So I kind of want to keep some of those same colors because I think they look cool. So I'm going to add a color overlay to ride into and I'm just going to kind of color pick different uh, things that I see just to see what might look good. So that black and red looks really cool. So I'm going to keep that. I'm just going to hold an option and copy that effect over to the night. That looks super, super cool, super clean. The other thing we need to kind of figure out is what we're going to add to the left and right. I want to try to find some chain. So I'm going to go to Google real quick and type out chain vector or something and just try to find some chains that we can use. So I found this chain right here and obviously I don't have rights to this, so we would have to buy it, but I'm just going to use it for this demonstration. Delete everything out of the background. So we're just taking away the white, delete that. And I want to add this in the center. So I'm just going to make sure it is all centered. And then we can cut out the chains from the right and left side. Uh, maybe even make them just a little bit bigger. So they are pretty large, but I think they look pretty cool too. So we're just going to keep that as is. And what we could do is add a layer mask to this and then just delete certain parts out. All I'm doing to get this like really grainy look is putting it on a soft brush and going to mode and just changing it to dissolve. And that's how you get that nice grainy look in Photoshop. It's really a cool trick. Um, I do want to try one extra thing with these rockers. I'm going to duplicate it one more time. I'm going to merge these together. So I'm going to convert to a smart object, add a layer mask, and I'm just going to try to erase some of this banner to see what this looks like. Kind of making it look kind of grungy, right? I don't know. I really like this, but um, I still think right into the night needs something different. What I want to do is try adding some texture to this text to see if it actually looks good or not. So. I want to take away the effects on the, the text there, and I want to just double click on the T um, of each text line. So I have this selected, I made it red. I'm going to double click on the T next to the night now and make that red as well. Now what I want to do is try to use that dissolve brush again on the actual text and just add some subtle texture in the inside of the text to see if we can make it look cool. And then we can add an inside stroke of red to kind of hide the edges, if that makes sense. So check this out. Bam, that looks so sick. And we'll do the same thing for the night. So we can just copy that effect over on the night and just kind of subtly, subtly add some text, texture. Text texture, what am I even saying? I'm gonna try to add a drop shadow to each text line and see what that looks like. Okay, a little noise looks cool. Let's add it to the bottom now, the bottom text. So we're just copying that drop shadow effect over 
I don't know. I think it looks really cool with that drop shadow in the background. Normally, I wouldn't add a drop shadow to text, but I think that looks super cool. So I kind of want to stick with it. Yeah, I dig this a lot. It's got this really nice vintage look. It needs a couple more things though. So what I want to do is create one more layer and I just want to change this to gray. We're going to add some subtle texture to it. So it has that same dissolve texture. So now I have that same dissolve texture inside of the skull and we're forcing it within the skull copy right here. And I'm adding a layer mask to this texture and just kind of getting rid of some of the texture. I just want it to be subtle. This looks pretty cool as is, but I do want to do one more thing. I want to add one more text line and just put since 1991. I think that looks pretty cool. Um, do I like that color? Not sold on it yet. Let's try a different color. I think it looks much better, just black. We can put that right under here. So um, this design is ready to print, minus it not being 300 resolution, simply because um, I'm just making a tutorial, I'm not actually printing. But if I were to actually print, again, I would wanna design this in 300 resolution. So yeah, if you guys are looking to print this, you can save it as a PNG, a PDF, a PSD file, whatever your screen printer wants. So just ask and you should get all that um, information that you need. That was it for today's episode of T-Shirt Design. This was episode three, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, also, don't forget to check out Into the AM in the description below, they're giving you guys 10% off right now. And that also includes sale items, so you guys can take advantage of that. And I have to say, they're super comfy and the designs are really cool. So you definitely wanna check them out in the description below. And if you guys have any questions about today's tutorial, you can comment in this section below and I will get back to you as fast as possible. Um, and also, just make sure you guys turn on notifications so you don't miss another video. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. Keep creating, keep being awesome. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.